is um, this is a video that I was absolutely not ready to make and the reason for making this I've got two reasons um, the first reason is because I'm not gonna I'm not gonna be active online for a while I don't know how long um, I log in just to make sure nobody's leaving bad comments but I'm not actually communicating with anybody at the moment and I'm not going to be for the foreseeable future um, if I say thank you I might say thank you but that's just about it um, Today is April 4th, uh, 2018, and yesterday I found out that my mom died. So, um, she was, uh, as you guys know, she had a stroke years ago, and I've been trying to find a way to come back to America so that I could see her, and I made it back to America, but, you know, between the car accident and Josh losing his job unexpectedly and just bills and bills and bills and things um, I and we didn't have a vehicle of our own until recently um, there was no way to rush down there and see her and I thought that I had more time uh, because when I called the nursing place that she was at they had said that <clears throat> she was eating and she was talking and she was doing really well she knew where she was a lot of the time and you know like her dementia was was wasn't as bad uh, or whatever it, she was doing pretty good and they were real optimistic and they made me feel really good and I spoke to my mom I actually recorded it so I'm gonna add it after this um, some pictures of her and some of what she last said to me I'm so glad that I recorded it that I at least have one conversation with her and she she gets quite mad at my sister and so she she would always say she doesn't have a daughter so at the start she's like I don't have a daughter and I had to tell her it's me it's me and she only knows me as Diana so I tell her you know it's Diana mom it's Diana and you know she was so happy to hear from me you know oh Diana I'm so happy I love you so much and whether she knew what was going on or not I still got her saying that to me and she was never one to really say she loved me or anything like that so um that was really nice. Um, so apparently on Sunday uh, in the morning, they went to go, I guess, wake her up and she was unresponsive. So they sent her to the hospital and I guess at the hospital they determined that she had had another stroke and bled into her brain like a lot. It was her third stroke. and. Um, my sister said on Monday they moved her to another room, like a hospice room or something, and Tuesday morning they got the call that she had just died. So, um, you know, she had one stroke back when Dorian was like a baby still. I remember seeing her in the hospital and that was a real touch and go. They said that she had a golf ball sized clot in her brain and if she had another stroke she wouldn't make it. Well, she had another stroke when I was in New Zealand. And she begged me, please, please, Diana, come and get me. Take me home. I want to go home. Just please come and help me. I don't want to be in the hospital anymore. And I, I tried so hard. I, There was just not enough money to, to fly from New Zealand to America and then still pay the fucking outrageous bills in New Zealand. And I just, I couldn't do it. There's no way. There was just not enough money. And, uh, because that would have been at least two grand for a ticket you know one way it would have been three or four grand for two ways and when you convert it it would have been closer to five six thousand dollars but there's no way I could have pulled that money out of my ass none and uh, she was stabilized and she was fine and I just I was like well that's when Logan and I decided we were gonna move to El Paso and she just got worse she went to stay with my sister she she wasn't doing so good she I know she tried to hang herself twice and she was always real kind of violent and you know she had they had to hide the knives from her and things that she could hurt herself or hurt other people with and she was obsessed with like bitches and whores and she'd always talk about sluts and bitches and seeing dead people and cats and like she was hallucinating quite a bit and 
she quit speaking English for a while, would only speak Thai, and so they finally couldn't do it anymore, and they sent her to a care facility because um, like she'd try to jump out of moving cars, and she'd um, walk out the front door. Even when she was being supervised, somehow she walked out the front door, and she'd go to the neighbor's house and just cause a lot of trouble, and she'd have the ambulance and the cops come all the time, and it was just, it was just a lot, a lot, a lot of stress. And in this place, yeah, they said she was doing good, and eating well, and all this junk. And when I talked to my brother, he said she was maybe 60-something pounds. She wasn't actually eating, so they had misled me. I I checked my emails yesterday, and I saw one from my sister saying, Mom, and then it said for me to call my brother with his number. And I got a bad feeling. I was like, the only reason I would get an email like that would be if something happened to her and I called him and there was no answer and I I was just I started shaking and everything started going numb and I was like I know something's wrong I need to call the place that she's staying at and see because I just like I can't settle and um, I called them and they thought that I was asking for well I thought I thought I called and I said I got a message from my sister about my mom and she said, oh, do you want to talk to so-and-so? And I was like, oh, my sister's there. Yeah, and I thought, well, if my sister's there, then everything's fine. But it wasn't her. It was a, a resident there, and they hung up on me when they realized it was the wrong number. So I called back, and I said, no, this is, you know, Kim Sparks' daughter. And she said, oh, well, you need to call this number. And she gave me a different number, and I was like, um, well, whose number is this? And she said, that's my boss. And I knew right then there's no way that they would have me call their boss unless my mom had died. And I just, I just got this knot in my stomach. And I was like, I know it, I know it, I know it. I know she's dead. And I, I just kind of like went into shock. And I called that number and there was no answer. And I left a message. They still haven't called me back. They, if it wasn't for my sister, I wouldn't have known anything because they, they haven't even returned my call. And right after that, my brother called me and he just said, Diana and I knew from his tone of voice I said I know and he said your mother's dead and uh, she passed away this morning and um, I was like well, what the hell happened because last I heard she was doing really well and they said they don't know why or how it happened it just her brain had shrunk so much from the dementia she probably would have had long in her anyway and um, I guess she was asleep and something just let go in her brain and she had another stroke and never woke up again and um, he was real upset about it and uh, it's kind of fucked up because when my dad died I was the one who had to call him and tell him that his dad was dead and now he called me to tell me my mom was dead and uh, you know me and Josh wanted to go to see her like whenever we got back on top again because we still owe the rent here we're still behind we're fifty dollars behind on the rent and on the 12th the next month's rent is due which we only just pulled out of our ass for this month a little bit and you know our power bill is like two months due and it's we're struggling so hard to catch up because of what FedEx did to him and and now this and it's just a lot of stress at the moment and we weren't able to pull it together to go see her yet like I I would talk to Josh about her and say you know if my mom was in her right mind and my dad was still alive they would love you they would absolutely love you because he's everything they've always wanted me to, to be with and um, he was looking forward to meeting her I can't wait to meet your mom and you know I was kind of mentally bracing myself because I knew there would be a chance that she wouldn't even know me when she saw me and she definitely wouldn't know him but I figured you know at least I would get to see her one more time because you know I haven't even seen her in like 10 years it's been about 10 years since I've seen her and um you know now I'm never gonna get to see her again like at all and she's gonna be cremated in Colorado and then taken to El Paso for the funeral and she's gonna be buried next to my dad because apparently they have previously arranged that and I guess this is the second reason for the video 
but not the main reason at all because I fully don't expect anything to come of this but um, I don't have any way of getting to the funeral at all we, like I said we don't have any money and uh, this isn't even a real ask because I, I, I know I'm just going to be torn apart for it and laughed at and huh no but I, I wouldn't forgive myself if I didn't at least try so um I guess any donation or whatever to maybe help us get to El Paso for the funeral I might have a week or two probably two weeks uh, because my sister has a lot of stuff to try to arrange we're in South Carolina so I need to get from South Carolina to El Paso and um I think that the cheapest and best way would probably be enough money for gas and to fix up the Jeep that we have now because we need one new tire in the front which Josh says you could find a good tire for maybe 40 bucks the belt squeaks there's a mechanic that um, he's retired and he does look at cars to help people out um, for very 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 cheap so that wouldn't be a lot it's a brand new belt but it squeals and squeaks and it just might be an adjustment it has an oil leak so we just need to buy some oil and um, replace the left turn signal and the right entire headlight piece but all in all I mean it'll still be hundreds of dollars because gas would probably be what, two three four hundred dollars I don't even know I don't know anymore I don't know how gas is here versus I don't know probably more than that per person for plane ticket and then once we got there we wouldn't have the ability to drive around or rent a car and get food or get to and from the funeral hotel room or whatever I just think it would be easiest and best a better use of money to fix up what we already have and just take that down so we could you know I could go around I could go look at her house you know, the house that I, I mostly grew up in doesn't belong to her anymore, but, and, um, I'm supposed to get her ashes as well. Um, not all of them. She's, she's having them split. Some go to Thailand. Some are supposed to go divided amongst the family and things like that. And my brother has a box of stuff for me of, of hers. And, um, as it is, since she's going to arrive cremated, I won't even get to look at her like I did with my dad in, in the, the coffin or whatever. She would just be ash by then, but she always wanted to be cremated and she always wanted to die. <laughs> she was um, she was in a lot of pain in her life and she had a really hard life and she's just always, you know, always miserable. So I hope that, you know, she's happy now. And maybe with my dad if there's such a thing and uh, I'm really I'm really upset that I didn't get to go see her one last time anybody that knows me knows how hard I was trying how much I really really wanted to see her before something happened and um, it's just it's like I I feel like I failed I've been saying that, you know, I feel like I failed her, I feel like I failed her, you know, she was begging me to come and help her, or come see her, and when she still had her mind, I wasn't able to make it down to see her, and, but my brother says that I'm lucky, really, because I can remember her the way she was before her stroke, and not what she turned into, because they know how she ended up being and uh, like apparently she, like she used to see all kinds of stuff. She'd see people crawling on the walls, and he said that one time he was visiting her, and she was laying on the bed, looking at the ceiling and laughing and asking him why he was on the ceiling. And he's like, "I'm not on the ceiling. I'm right here." And you know, like things like that. She just she didn't know what was going on. She always saw dead people and things trying to hurt her, and kill her, and you know. Um, I just hope that. You know, she was asleep, and she didn't feel or know when it happened, and and would have just been gone without having to suffer. And um, you know, I hope she 
had some little part left in her brain where she understood that I didn't abandon her and I would have come to see her if I could have but I just wasn't able to you know and um yeah I guess that's it I just um I really don't know 100% what to feel uh I'm I'm crushed and I'm devastated but it's different than it was with my dad because I was there for him and I saw everything I saw when he got sick and when he got worse and when he went into a coma and we didn't think he'd wake up and when he was begging us to let him die and you know when he um, got out of the hospital and he was so happy to be outside and out of the hospital and he look look at the sky and feel the sun on his face and just smile and he's thanking the guy who wheeled him out on the wheelchair thank you thank you so much because he just he didn't want to be in the hospital anymore and but like the next day um he was sick again and he had to go back in and he was so mad and he was fighting and fighting he's i don't want to go i don't want to go but he had to and he couldn't even walk he wasn't able to stand up and so the neighbor's son or the family friend's son had to pick him up and carry him to the car and he that was that was the last time he ever like saw the sun or was outside because you know he spent the rest of his life like a month or so in the hospital and then he died and you know I remember being there for all of that and that was really really hard and my mom it's more impactful because it's my mom that was my stepdad but he was like my real dad you know um my mom is my mom and uh it's it's different because i haven't seen her in 10 years and i wasn't there i i haven't seen her with her stroke and see her you know wither away into like a shell of herself i i don't remember her like that and i just feel like like she was lucid the whole time because when I talked to her she was pretty lucid she she knew what was going on except she would start talking about sluts and people and I think she probably says sluts a lot because you know my real dad left her for her best friend and she never really got over that that betrayal and she carried that with her for many many years and so she's always been you know sluts and whores and and she told me stories about how she grew up in Thailand and having to prepare food there, and, you know, old little villages and stuff, and having to kill chickens, and she'd have nightmares of headless chickens coming after her and things like that, and, you know, I think a lot of that's kind of those memories have spilled together in her brain and had, had just been a constant in her head, and, you know, I... I'm used to not seeing her and talking to her, but then it's hard to come to terms with the fact that even if I had a million dollars, I couldn't just fly to her and just see her and hug her and just, you know, be with her one more time. And, you know, if anything happened, I couldn't just pick up the phone and call her and just hear her voice, you know? So, um... I go back and forth from being like kind of numb and like this didn't just happen to being really sad so it's it's a really hard thing and um I'm just trying to sort myself out at the moment trying to sort out again how to get there if anybody wants to help donate my paypal is below it's starblood spelled I've changed it so it's not bl00d anymore it's b-l-o-o-d at live.com and um I'm looking at hundreds of dollars to get over there and to get back uh if um if you want to donate then that's the way to do it if not I, I, I don't expect anybody to help I really don't um it's on me to get over there which I, I don't honestly think I can um, but if you wanted to that's there and if I don't raise enough and I cannot make it just be sure to leave your email address uh, 
with the payment and I'll just leave everything in there and if I don't make enough by next week or whatnot I'll just refund it back to you because I I won't have been able to go and that way you're not just losing your money um, you can either trust me on that or not it's completely up to you the point of this video is not to beg for money I just put it out there because you never know and um, people have been writing me and messaging me saying why don't you set up a GoFundMe or do this and do that and I'm like I have said it in a comment nobody's gonna help I don't think anybody's gonna help and I don't feel comfortable asking but I don't want to go the rest of my life thinking you know what if I had asked and I, I made it to her funeral you know I I have to at least put it out there I've got no shame right now I guess but you know it, it is whatever I I don't expect anybody to help I don't expect donations and free money for for that I tried to get help way back when my dad was sick um, to buy some food for him because he had special food and I think one person donated twenty dollars and I gave that to my mom and she got mad at me for raising money for her I remember she said don't do that I'm not poor I can take care of myself and I was like no you can't right now you told me you couldn't so I was just trying to help and um, she was uh, very offended but, uh, I don't know, just, um, I don't know, I, I've got Doja videos scheduled, I've got, like, a handful of videos that were previously scheduled, and that's what's going to be just released as I have them scheduled, this is going to be up there, and, um, I don't have a definitive date on anything yet, she hasn't been cremated yet, um, so I'd say I have about a two week window because my sister mentioned that my brother was going out of town next week so it will be the week after when he got back I'm pretty sure that's what she said and um, that gives me a little bit of time to try uh, otherwise it's just that's it but um, I'm going to add videos or I'm going to add some pictures of my mom now with um, the last conversation I had with her and uh, thank you guys for watching and understanding why I'm, I might approve your comments, but I'm, I'm not going to be talking on any platform for a while until I can get my head around this and just either numb myself up to completely or just come to terms with it, which I haven't even come to terms with my dad being gone and it's been 10 years since he died. So, uh, I don't know if I'll ever come to terms with this, but, you know, both my parents are gone, and really, I just, I don't know. You never think that you're going to tell yourself, you know, that your, your mom is dead, but it happens, and, uh, it's just, I guess, uh, appreciate them while you have them, because you never know shit happens and one day they're gone and you're going to miss that chance forever to see them or to talk to them or, or whatever, and, um, it just really sucks, you know, like, we knew it was going to happen, we just didn't know when, and you think you're ready for it, but you're never ready for it, you're never, never ready for it. And, um, I don't know, I'm going to go now and put this together and just try to, just try to calm down and get back to myself and I hope that, you know, she knows that I, I tried and, uh, I guess I'll see you guys, I don't know when, but I'll see you guys at some point and, uh, take care and this really sucks yeah hello Miss King it's your daughter you want to talk to her uh, it's Why? Diana I don't have no daughter it's Diana yeah, it's your daughter. Mom. Oh. Who are you? Diana. 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 Where are 
Ohio. I'm in America, Mom. I love you. I love you, too. Uh-huh. No more die or die already. Uh, come out. Everything happened to me. Okay? How are you doing? The same, um, not good. I'm four down and everything. I'm too old. Well, I want to come see you when I can. Okay. Well, come see me, okay? I'm so happy I had you. Yeah, I, I moved back to America. I'm, uh, I'm in South Carolina. Miss Good. Well, she won't talk to anybody. I know, but that's okay. I'm happy. I hear you. Well, I'm glad. I wanna. I've been so worried about you. I'll come see you, okay? Okay. She, she no one, nothing to do with me. She, she hurt me everywhere. But uh, she mad at me. She say I'm, um, I no kill a man. She have a sex with, and she get so pissed off and. Oh, I'm so happy, baby. Oh, I'm, I'm glad. Okay. Okay. I just want to tell you, my God, I'm dying.